Okay. Uh, well, a good friend of mine, hi Tim, uh, loaned me this piece of history and uh, just to see if there's anything I could do maybe to get it going. So I've been working on it. And if you don't recognize this, maybe this will be a hint here. Or maybe we'll give you some more hint, like right down there. So this is a Bell 103. It's a Livermore Data Systems Bell 103 uh, acoustic, uh, acoustic coupling modem. And so I won't get into the way the history, but uh, way back in the day, um, around 56, Hushaphone wanted to connect actually through an, even an acoustic coupler to the phone system. Of course, back then, the Bell system was the ruler of all, and they said, no, you can't connect anything to our system. It could irreparably harm it. And um, so things moved through the courts, but in 1968, the, the FCC uh, had the Carter phone decision, and at that point, they even said it was okay to hook electrically onto the phone system. So, pretty radical stuff. But, uh, but back in the day, uh, the way you connected to a computer remotely was through one of these acoustical, acoustic coupler modems. And essentially, I don't have the phone, but essentially, the phone would set here. The uh, cord of the phone would come through the, the, the little slot on the, on the case. And, um, and actually there was, I gotta find some replacement foam. Their foam goes in here and then you would close the case because, um, it, I, because you're acoustically coupling. If you've got outside noise, that would get in and mess with your data. And so um, anyway, uh, so this, this is a 300 bit per second modem. Uh, actually the bell, uh, the, the 103 standard was the second standard uh, for uh, the, for acoustical couplers uh, or for modulation. Um, this uses something called audio frequency shift keying, and uh, the originating station, which this is, is uh, it, it just basically has two tones: a mark tone at 1270 and a space tone at 1070 hertz. Uh, the answering machine has some different tones: a mark at uh, 2225 hertz and a space at 2025 hertz. So, um, anyway, uh, and it would it would key that tone back and forth, and the receiving station would would detect the change in tones and would know whether it was a mark or space one zero. So. Anyway, the interesting thing is, see if this zooms in here, this is actually labeled as a BC, but I can't, f could not find any data on the BC. Found the Model A, and actually found a schematic for a Model A, but uh, looking at some pictures at the uh, Computer History Museum, um, this appears to be actually a Model, um, a model C. So, uh, Actually, no, I'm sorry, this is a, actually this is a Model B, uh, made in 1965, and uh, the C is completely different, and the A does not have uh, the same configuration there with those lights. So anyway, so we're, we're, we're hoping this is a Model B. Um, so, you know, if you look down here, we've got a uh, 163 connector there for the power. I can't get it out, and a uh, RS-232 DB25 uh, female uh, for the data. And of course, a female means this data communications equipment, DCE. And so I'll put my, my cord back in there. And, um, you know, generally I, uh, as I, I glued a lot of the joints, uh, the, you know, there's a little bit of wood missing here, there's a panel missing here. I'm looking to find something that would, that would match that, but, uh, um, but then inside, let's see if I can do this without messing it up. Uh, it's pretty basic. There are um, three boards. Um, there is a modulator board on here. There is a demodulator board here. And there's the power supply, right? And so, right, uh, modem, modulator, demodulator. So, Pretty straightforward. It's all transistors, uh, 14 transistors on there, and uh, the power supply is pretty basic. I don't know if you can see there, the board looks pretty burned up, pretty dark, and that was really what was wrong with it besides hooking up or fixing the, uh, uh, the edge connectors needed a bunch of cleaning and, 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 you know, just things like that, but the board 
Uh, it, it uses, it's, it's a, uh, this is EIA standard, so that means that uh, it's a plus or minus 12 uh, data signal, and so the board's got a center tap 24 volt transformer on it, goes through a full wave bridge rectifier, goes through some capacitors, and then, um, and then goes on a, uh, a Zener diode shunt regulator, which is basically a Zener diode and a, and a one watt resistor, and they compute the resistor, you know, d depending on the, on the uh, current draw of the device. And I'm not sure if they must have computed it, maybe not quite so right, but um, anyway, the, this had gotten so hot that the, the Zeners actually ended up unsoldering themselves. They melted the solder. And I don't know if you can see there, the green trace, uh, the trace actually lifted up. So um, I put new Zeners in, one of the uh, resistors was on a tolerance, I replaced it, and then I, I put the uh, trace down with, uh, with some high, high uh, temperature uh, PC board repair epoxy. So, um, so anyway, that was the sum total of my of my restoral so far. Like I said, I, I want to find some um, uh, gray foam for it to get that part done. But uh, we're going to turn it on here, and I'm going to bring the camera close. Oh, I guess the microphone, I'm wearing the mic. So, the tone uh, indicates this is a pure modem, right? Uh, this is way before uh, modems negotiated, did handshakes, you know, the normal squabble, squabble, squabble noise that you hear. Um, when you turn it on, it's, it starts producing its transmit tone, and then that transmit tone actually uh, moves up and down depending on the data. So. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can go down here and let's see. I don't know if you can hear that, but the, the tone is, is actually varying up and down a little bit there. But, um, use, oh, sorry, using the data scope. But, so we're going to, uh, so the problem here is, so I've got the modem, uh, it works, and now all I need is a Western Electric Series 500 rotary dial telephone set, a landline, and some place to dial into. And I don't have any of those things. So we are going to make do here. Uh, first of all, let's set up the data scope. So we uh, hit program and uh, protocol setup, and I'm doing this actually for a reason, which will hopefully become evident here in a second. We're going to go to monitor. It's uh, RS-232. It is ASCII. It is 8 bits, no parity. Um, this is an asynchronous uh, data stream. Uh, one stop bit. So eight, we're three, we're 8 bits, no, no parity, one stop bit. And we come down here and we say the data is normal and the clock is inter oh, sorry, internal and the speed is 0, 300 and we say run. And so it's actually picking up my voice there. Uh, it really <laughs> This, this, is, this is why you need that foam and, and you know the thing is very sensitive to noise. Now I can't speak uh, frequency shift keying and so so now I, I, so I can monitor it now but still how am I going to find a source that that lets me really see if it works well guess what uh, in uh, above 1988 I guess a uh, a group called the information society or ISOC uh, their synth pop group um, the third album that they released, uh, the album is called Peace and Love, and the last track on it was a uh, song, I guess, uh, that was called 300 BPS 8N1. 300 bits per second, 8 bits, no parity, one stop bit. And if you play it, what does that sound like? And then we're going to hear modulated tone here in a second. So maybe I can decode that with my 
with my modem. So to couple it, um, you know, say, hey, the um, um, actually this protocol, uh, this frequency shift protocol is still alive and well in the amateur radio uh, for, for packet transmission, packet data transmission. So I'm going to grab my, the headphones from my uh, ham radio and come and they're my Bob Heil Pro hand, he headphones. They're very good headphones. And I'm going to set them there. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to start that over again. And the modem is decoding the track on their album. And I'm sorry, I think that's sort of cool. Okay, I'll stop it. And if we move, um, no, it won't let me. It won't let me scroll up. Actually, you can Google this if you want. There's pick up my voice again. You can Google this if you want to see what the uh, uh, what the thing says. It's some sort of a rant of theirs, just some something about somebody being abducted or something, but I don't know. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. I just I wanted to uh, I wanted to make this for Tim to show you that it actually got it working. Uh, I still have a little bit of restoration to do on it. Um, oh, we got we got lights in the front there too. Those work. So uh, I just think it's just so cool that uh, that this you know that history lives on and and we, there are still examples of of really wasn't that long ago but uh, my how things have changed so anyway uh, that's it thanks a lot.